Great. My name's John. Um, this is my presentation. I assume most of you guys are selling websites to people. If not, this may not really be very interesting to you, but hopefully it is. I'm interested to know why you guys came to my presentation. Anyone? You're in Gold Coast, right? Yep, there's some chocolate. I don't think it's feasible to get them back there, but... <laughs> yep. Um, I do local government contract work. Great. Um, I've also got some other applications that they're looking at developing in other countries. Yep. What state are you in? I'm in New South Wales, I'm in Newcastle. All oh, right, good, good. Um, I find Drupal's really entrenched in local government in Victoria, but New South Wales, we've got a few Joomla customers. Um, any other reasons? Uh, I work for a, uh, a large company with like 150,000 employees. And, yep. Um, we, like, we're competing against other, like, against I, like uh, we're in-house, but we're competing against like, IBM solutions. And yep. Stuff, and their solutions are just so terrible, and yet they charge a fortune for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We come across that a lot. Um, and uh, what I'd like is for us to work together as a community to go for these bigger projects to give us more credibility. Um, one of the challenges that I see is that we'll go for a tender and there'll be 35 Drupal proposals and three Joomla proposals and so Joomla just gets discounted. Um, so, uh, I was going to, I'll skip this. I was just interested to know who's primarily focusing on enterprise. Anyone selling to enterprise currently? Yep, some people. Mostly to SME or, yep, okay. Um, we found that uh, Juma has a perception problem with enterprise. Um, often entrenched IT departments have a preference that reinforces their own knowledge and that might be a Microsoft base or Drupal or something else, and this is a challenge. Uh, there is a perception in many places that Joomla is a SME product um, or like a microblogger, like a WordPress, what I think WordPress is best at. Um, there's a lack of trust there. Hacking doesn't give anything a good name. As an earlier presenter said today, it actually happens across the board. If, Apple, if Apple's going to get hacked, um, you know, some small business in the middle of nowhere, what chance have they got? We like to think of Drupal as the enemy um, and uh, we'd like to work together to take more market share off them. Um, where we are in a position where we can work together. Uh, I've worked in a couple of different industries prior to being in web development. Uh, I worked in the food industry where our competitors all hated each other and tried to sue each other. I worked in a different industry where competitors one kilometre away would go and play golf once a week. I think we could be one of those collaboration type industries. Our market, what we're doing is taking over from everyone else. That earlier presenter today, you know, five years ago, web was just an afterthought. Now they've got 15 in-house staff. Um, this is representative across the board. Uh, if you look at how much digital is taking from traditional online, we're all familiar with this story. We're going to be the winners of that. And I'd like Joomla to be the winner in terms of CMS. Um, so my agenda today, I'm going to start off with looking at why I should sell for more, a bit about myself, Joomla CMS, some trends, and you guys have already read the slide, so we'll keep going. A lot of people think that selling for more money is a really good thing just purely for the additional money. There's a bit more than that. It gives you more resources to do a better quality job. Instead of having to scrounge around trying to uh, fit a client's ridiculous needs into a tiny budget, you might have a really good budget to do a trial project and prototype something and experiment. And it gives you the opportunity to be really creative and use the full resources of your team. You're often working with better educated clients. They might have more technical background or at least they're not asking as stupid questions. Uh, that can be a very pleasant side effect. Um, you get ongoing work, and that's really beneficial, especially if you employ staff. Uh, Australia is a high 
cost-based location, and if you have staff, ongoing revenue really makes that a lot easier to pay for. There's also an ego boost available, um, when that can be nice too. There are some downsides, and people don't often think about this. If you're going to sell more expensive websites, you often need really expensive staff to actually run them. I've got a screenshot here of a lead user experience, uh, user experience designer on Seek, and this was a couple of weeks ago, 155K. Now, if you've got an office of 20 people with salaries that big, you need to sell a lot of websites just to break even each month. Um, and uh, that, that can be a reason for not going up to bigger sites. You could be more creative and outsource particular stuff. That's what we've tried to do. Um, but it's something to be, you know, to, to think about. Some of the other downsides. Often your first projects, when you go through that learning curve, you, you hit areas which you didn't expect and you encounter problems that cost you a lot of money. If you make a mistake on a $10,000 website, it's not going to send you broke. I know of a website that cost $5 million to build, then it was sold to a client for $1 million. Now, if that's going to cost you $5 million of wages and you're only getting $1 million of revenue for that, you're going to be in, in potentially difficult territory. Um, and I certainly, I certainly know of companies that have gone from small to, to very big clients, got rid of all their small clients because it's too hard to deal with lots of individuals, had a handful of multi-million dollar clients, and then they lose them all one at a time, then they have to sack all their staff and they're finished. It can be very difficult to go back down. Once you build up a good team of great people, very hard to go back down. Um, for us, we can make a lot more profit off a ten to twenty thousand dollar website than we can off a thirty to forty thousand dollar website, uh, just because it's very easy for us to really to hit them out. Um, I thought I'd tell you a bit more about myself. I founded Butterfly in two thousand and six, so about a year after Joomla got started. Uh, I stupidly was going to build our own content management system. I came from a web development company that had its own content management system. I thought that was the way to do it. Luckily, I, I got Joomla suggested to me and, and haven't really looked back. Um, Butterfly, we have 30 staff. We're in Melbourne. We do a lot of work in Sydney. Um, we do QVB, which is a shopping centre near here. Um, we do wine in New South Wales, which won the Sydney Design Award about a month ago for a responsive website. That one in itself has got 140 microsites with different domain names, different templates, different looks. Um, most of our work is in Melbourne and Sydney, but all across Australia. I'm from Perth originally, so we have a bit of work there. Um, we've won quite a few awards. In terms of clients, uh, I think you've probably heard me talk about some of them. You might have been to the presentation earlier where uh, one of my top developers was talking about the integration project we did for Officeworks, where IBM did the supply chain software, an ad agency did the design, and, and we did the, bit, the Joomla bit in the middle. Um, and that's an e-commerce site that's doing $2 million a day. We also have some other subsidiaries. I'm going to limit my discussion today to open source content management systems. The way that I see it, uh, WordPress is a great solution for people who are talking about their cat or recipes or for microblogging or uh, if it's a campaign based website for a, you know maybe it's a three month website. Drupal I don't particularly like. Um, it is entrenched in a lot of enterprises. Joomla sits in the middle which we think is uh, a really good place. It's easier to use than Drupal certainly on an ongoing basis and we haven't found any limitations that, that can't be over overcome. We've certainly scaled Joomla to very large websites, multiple servers. Um, there's no size limitation there. And in fact, if you look at the load on a server for a given amount of traffic, Joomla is a lot more efficient than Drupal. Um, you might have read the Drupal versus Joomla uh, technical comparison that Arash wrote. It's on our website. This one blog gets more traffic than anything else on our website. Um, which we find interesting, and some people have read it, and actually some people here have commented on it. Uh, we do review the content management systems every year and make sure we're happy with our decisions. Uh, I'm personally hoping that Drupal 8 splits their community and it goes backwards, but uh, I don't know how they... Sorry? Yeah, backstop? 
let's hope it uh, falls over. I, I don't think that'll be the case, um, especially with the Australian government sending 5,000 jobs to America, if anyone followed that Drupal decision. Um, these are some of the reasons in the technical blog about why we like Joomla over Drupal. But Drupal 8 is coming. Um, it will be a complete rebuild. That to me says that the existing Drupal knowledge base, people are going to have to relearn how it's all going to work from scratch. We've already had the fork. A lot of people are rejecting having to learn object orientated. Um, hopefully they just come over to Joomla and our community quadruples in size. Is that a question? Yeah, we see that now. We see new websites being delivered in Drupal 6. Um, we see, uh, I've seen some crazy stuff out there, but it is a bit off topic, so I'll try and, um, very interesting though. Why do we like Joomla for enterprise? And like I say, we've had some incredibly complex and large websites on Joomla. FOF, we really like FOF. Um, we like the enterprise components, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. I've touched on robust and scalability. Um, Plus, it's got all the benefits of open source. And this is one of the things why the market becomes more and more educated. I'm hoping they'll choose it over closed source. But that's not necessarily the case. Um, all of those clients on the bottom are clients of ours. We think Jim was missing some stuff really for the enterprise grade area and this is actually stuff that we're trying to, we would like to contribute some of these items to the community um, and one of our agendas for coming to the conference is to reach out in, in relation to that. Um, I assume by now you guys have all read that slide so I'll keep moving. <laughs> no? Um, workflow publishing, we find, I find this one of the really interesting facets of large enterprises they want a lot of corporate functionality that you put in there and then six months later you come and they're just not using it all. Um, and that's, that's an example. There's some really good components you can use to do that, but really we think it should be built in there the same way that version control now is. Um, uh, we'd like FOF to actually not execute badly written code. Um, some error checking, built in better analytics. Some of the trends we're seeing in the larger clients uh, are a move towards Agile. Who here builds websites for the client on an Agile basis? A handful. We recently had an interesting situation. Um, I think it was the New South Wales Sport and Recreation Society where there was a tender and we put in a proposal. Anyway, it came out of that that more than 80% of the um, tendering responses were suggesting Agile and they chose Agile to um, minimise their costs, which I think they're going to find interesting um, in about a year. Um, we see marketing departments getting control of websites, and this is an area where large organisations, it's usually IT or marketing, and uh, our preference is when marketing runs it. Some other people work better with the developers, with, with the IT departments. Um, the trend towards increasing spend on digital, we've covered off on already. Um, user experience, responsive. I, I still reckon 80% of the people, I, customers I talk to, don't know what responsive is. Um, so we're obviously all very familiar with it. Um, uh, we've won some design awards for it, uh, but a lot of, you know, it's, it's an industry term we're very familiar with that a lot of our customers who might be spending millions of dollars don't know what it is. 
Uh, I'm going to touch on how I see large organisations buying. Uh, if this is boring for you, please feel free to leave. Um, it's very different from small businesses. Me personally, I actually prefer selling to small businesses, business owners, because it's something I understand. People can make a decision, you can move on. Large organisations take a lot of time, there's a lot of people involved, politics, and the uh, decisions can really go sideways and take unexpected turns. It's much slower. Um, in terms of the actual characters involved, you have someone who actually buys the product, you have somebody who's most powerful who will decide. Um, you also have influencers, people who can shift the opinions, gatekeepers who can stop um, your, your proposal being even considered. Now we find IT or CTOs, for example, that think that Joomla or open source is just a security problem, they will just block Joomla at that point. We encounter that all the time. Um, there's not much you can do if there's a gatekeeper in an enterprise that just doesn't want to even consider it. Um, but luckily, we're finding that's decreasing. And if you look at something like Officeworks, Officeworks internally chose Joomla and then chose us as a supplier. If that's the case, then it's, it's, it's very easy. Uh, we find the users, the people who are actually going to be entering content ongoing, they're in an enterprise situation, their opinion actually is pretty well disregarded. And I think that's a shame because they're the people who are going to have the most ongoing use of the content management system and needing contact with the support providers. So, uh, you know, I've seen a SharePoint install which was half a million dollars. Uh, it's just a nightmare for the way it's been configured for the users. <laughs> Their opinion was not even considered as part of the buying process. Um, and that's relatively common in enterprise space. Typically, the buyers are marketing managers, and they can have different, different names, communication manager, online manager, some variation of that. Um, and they're usually a decider. In some organisations, though, it goes up the food chain. Maybe it's the CEO actually signing off on that. We had a, a $300 million company as a client, and the ultimate decider was the CEO, who was probably a very talented woman. Um, when it came to present options to her, she didn't know the difference between an app and a mobile website. And that was what she spent 20 minutes talking to us about, having to have this app that basically was just a mobile website. You know, when you're signing off on a very large enterprise site, these are the decision makers you're going to be dealing with. People whose technical knowledge maybe is 20 or 30 years out of date um, when websites weren't a really big part of the thinking. Um, IT managers, obviously very important. Uh, senior managers of different kinds can become involved. CFOs often become involved. They are very focused on money and they usually have very little technical knowledge. So they're guided and they'll actually take the advice of the IT people more than they will the marketing managers. Um, that's, that's a generic, obviously, um, but it's an interesting, interesting one. They're often very focused on risk too. So if you can portray Joomla as a lower risk option, that can help. Five minutes. All right, we need to keep moving. Um, the tension I've talked about, we'll skip that. You've all read that one? Good. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so the general process we go through is, is probably pretty similar to you. In a large website, you're celebrating, and then six months later, you find what you've actually sold wrong. This is if you're doing it on a fixed price basis. Obviously, uh, if you're working on an agile or other methodology, you can be very happy. Uh, for us, we, we like to do two options, option A, option B. It's just the way I like to sell. I thought some of you might be interested. Um, including percentages for ongoing, uh, sorry, project management type elements, obviously very common these days. Um, charging for things that people's bosses want to hear. We find that very important. Going to have to cut some of this. In enterprise, they always run the terms and conditions past their lawyers. Their lawyers always object to something, and I've never had this, you know, never had the same terms be objected to by different lawyers. So if you start selling to enterprise, that's just a normal part of the course. They've got to justify their fee. Don't worry about that. Uh, we do a lot of integrations. So if you look at someone like Diabetes Australia, their Joomla website is integrated to Salesforce. 
Uh, so if you buy through their shopping cart, it pumps the information into Salesforce. There's an e-learning system and there's two or three other systems and their website sits in the middle of it and a lot of data flows backwards and forwards. And this is the future of these sort of medium to large organisations where everything's integrated. They've got specific fit for purpose software and we'd like to see Joomla as a fit for purpose content management system. Service level agreements are great if you haven't uh, sold them before. They're an opportunity for you to price um, services which you might do for free. If you're, if you're selling to small businesses and one of your customers calls you on the mobile on a Saturday night, you'll fix that problem. In a large business, they're happy to pay you for that ride. Uh, so that's actually one of the benefits of dealing with IT departments. They're very used to SLAs on all of their ongoing services. Um, I'll skip some of this content. How much time have we got? Okay, sorry. We find training a very big thing in enterprise. Um, Customised training manuals, levels of training for different users. You'll get this character, the manager that has to be involved in training gets there and then just spends the whole time ignoring it and checking their emails. Um, another person you get, I'm not sure if you've come across the, the picnic, um, problem in chair, not in computer. Anyone? <laughs> um, you get a lot of users in a corporate environment who'll come into a training session and then they'll just act like they've never used a keyboard or mouse before. Um, unfortunately, that's, that's part of the course. Uh, this is my WCAG slide. Uh, everyone wants to go there. It can cost a lot more money than people expect, especially if they've got to start messing around with their 400 videos they've made over the last 30 years. Um, and also, some clients don't understand that to actually meet WCAG at a high level, you may need to have compromises to your design to actually achieve what WCAG sets out to do to make it an accessible website. And we find that sometimes a balance that users, oh, sorry, that the buyers don't get. Uh, this is what we include in our service level agreements. Good, you've read it. Um, these days, especially for large sites, the expectations on high hosting is really um, important. If you put a lot of traffic to a Joomla site, it can cope with it if it's in a robust enough environment. Uh, if you want to have load balancing and improved caching and all of that sort of stuff, it's all possible with Joomla. Now, a lot of developers, especially um, people who are new to the community, aren't aware of how to implement those features. And that in itself can give Joomla a bad name because it might be falling over and then you find out that the uh, enterprise has contracted it to their next door neighbour's brother and He's put it onto a server in GoDaddy and somewhere in America and there's 400,000 other websites on that server and for some reason it can't cope with a million people at the same time. Um, thought you might enjoy that. Okay, so if we've got time, I just want to go into uh, some of the questions that we get from Enterprise and how we handle them. Um, firstly, anyone here get any common objections from Enterprise type clients? Excellent question. Joomla can actually connect to a multiple, a different, um, I'm getting your word confused here. You can use many different kinds of database with Joomla. You can connect to other larger ones if you want. But the reality is, if you actually set it up properly, that's not going to be the problem. If you use AWS, for example, and you use a scalable Elastic, then we're starting to go into database stuff that I don't know about. Um, that's not going to be a limitation on your site. How, how was that? <laughs> was okay. The biggest, biggest answer that we get back from it most of the time is that Joomla can handle it, but are you on a server that can handle it? And yeah. Out of 10, it's not actually Joomla that falls on the server. Yeah, and if the, the, with the Amazon Web Services, if you, you have the scalable front ends going into an elastic, uh, and then it exceeds my, my knowledge, but Elastic database, it can scale as much as you want, as long as you're prepared to pay for it. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, I'll quickly go through. Um, we often get, oh, we get a lot of phone calls. Can we help them with their website? And our senior rate is $187 an hour. Um, my, my counterpoint to that is we have a team of 30 people that we have here just so we can handle your one phone call a year 
and we have all the knowledge in-house how to answer that. We have payroll tax, annual leave, sick leave. This is Australia. When there's a cold, everyone takes two or three days off. Um, all of these things, development companies in China and India and the Philippines don't have to worry about. Uh, if you want people that have worked really well with your platform and they're sitting here and know what to do, you've got to pay the appropriate price. Um, we do get asked uh, the question, Joomla is hard to work with or harder than WordPress? My answer to that is there's always a trade-off between ease of use and functionality available to the user. And Joomla tries to go down the centre line of being powerful for the user and still easy to use. And the reality is if your users can um, know how to use Microsoft Word, Excel and Google Chrome, they'll figure out Joomla in no time and they can Google anything they have problems with. It's really not that hard to learn. Um, why pay for upgrade? If any of you like idiocracy, that's upgrade from idiocracy. Who here uses Microsoft um, Windows 95? No one? So they've probably upgraded their operating system, maybe even to a Mac at some point. The reality is computer systems change. There's so many layers of technology underneath Joomla going from the uh, languages and the, the operating systems. All of these things change over time and if you don't upgrade, you're just going to get fallen behind. If you think of when we started selling Joomla websites, Facebook wasn't in Australia, no one was using mobile phones, uh, Flash was an acceptable way of building a website. These things have changed so enormously and so has people's expectations of what websites can do. So that's why it's good to have a process where you keep upgrading them. Now I know competitors in Melbourne that have got six servers full of really old Mambo sites. Um, that's, that's a time bomb. <laughs> They're not even going to be able to cope when that stuff all falls over. Um, Uh, it's kind of like a generic. Okay, like, and I'm just, I'm just curious, the best one is, you know, you're quite annoying, quite annoying to start seeing that development is obviously the constant upgrade, right? So it's all kind of dead, like, you know, you build a site for no blocks, but then there's a security patch that comes out three weeks down, and there's another security patch, there's this, there's that, et cetera, so you're always kind of having to, like, update that. If you have a and just do that. Very good question, and I don't think we even have a very good answer to it. But what, firstly, we don't do one-click upgrades because for enterprise clients, if you do a one-click upgrade and it breaks and it's a live site, that's a, it's a really serious problem. So for us, we, we duplicate the site, do it on a test server, we check that it's right, we get the clients to check that it's right, and, we, and if it is, we put it back. So all of that overhead, that's a lot of time that you've got to charge for, and if you don't charge for it, you're going to go broke. Um, so even with a one-click upgrade, even if it works, there's still overhead in enterprise level. What's good about larger clients is they understand risk, and they understand, if you explain that process to them, they're more than happy to pay thousands of dollars to do a one-click upgrade. Um, for smaller customers, obviously, they, they hate it. Now, it, we hated LTS and STS when they came out, and it took us probably at least six months a year to figure it out in our own heads. And just when we loved it and were selling it to all our clients, then, of course, they abandoned it. Um, so we found that a bit challenging. But, but, you know, WordPress has got automatic, or it's got a lot of easy upgrades, but the core is not improving the way that Joomla's core is improving. And this is something that's going to, it's going to come home to roost at some point, like Drupal 7 having to go to Drupal 8. Um, at some point, that's not going to be sufficient. At some point, you've got to upgrade the language on the server. Um, so that's where, time out. Um, right, okay. Um, okay, I think I'll, any questions?
Yep. 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 No, look, we have a pretty, we reject a lot more tenders than we go for. Um, and we've been involved in tender writing for clients. And yet, the reality is, whoever's been given the consulting contract to write that tender is going to write it for themselves. Now, we did a big one where we wrote the tender ourselves and we actually lost the tender. So it's not 100%. We've certainly found that. Um, we're seeing that all the time. And it's, I actually think tenders are a really bad way of buying a website because the clients don't understand what they want until they really go through the process. And this is where Agile is a much better way of actually building something like this. But in a government procurement um, mindset, they're going to go to a tender, they're going to try and chuck everything into a document that no, no one at their end really understands. And then by the time it gets built, it's like eight months later. Who knows what's changed in the meantime? But to answer your direct question, if it looks loaded and it looks like it's been written for someone who's already an insider, we would stay away from it. Any other questions? It's the wrong what platform. Yeah. We do get this all the time. And we've successfully converted a few of them. We've got one right now where they went to tender for a WordPress website. And this is a $100,000 job where WordPress was not going to be the right platform for that. And in that instance, we converted them to a Joomla. We, we happened to win. But often in a tender situation, if they're looking for an answer and there's five people say they'll do it the way they want and you're the only one saying alternative, you'll just get kicked out at the shortlist. We had one where we got down to the final list of three, multiple presentations, and then we found out they were always going to choose Drupal. They just wanted to have a Joomla in there to have a, have a look at what it would be. Um, and that's part of my agenda for being here. I want the Joomla community to take over from the Drupal community. Yeah. I think that's a I think that's a great perspective. Powerful positions. I think you're right. We have an opportunity. I don't think you're right thinking. 
Yeah. Because they locked the entire server down that tight, yeah. then you couldn't fart. <laughs> yeah, we encounter that kind of situation all the time. Yeah. Yeah. In, in our own servers, we have our, our own servers really incredibly locked down. There's, and we have this self-healing uh, monitoring system that we built ourselves where if someone hacks it, basically it will override it back to the correct settings. Um, well... There's some, some of the stuff out there that's hacking Joomla sites is, is pretty powerful. Um, but yeah, a lot of corporate IT departments, they've got the most outdated systems with giant security holes in them, and they'll point the finger at Joomla. Yeah. yeah. Um, on one of your slides earlier, one of the things on there was uh, workflows. Yeah. Was that a wish list, or you're saying that you've been able to come up with a decent enterprise we solution? Um, I'm not a developer, uh, so I'm not actually sure what solution we're doing right now. We have been able to come up with something which I think is based on a component that you buy. Yeah. Um, Just running on the same ACL or something? I don't know which one it is. Um, but if you send me an email, I'll find out and let you know. Um, we, we would like to start folding some of these enterprise features back in. That, that's what we would like to do. But if there's a push towards Joomla White, maybe those features are not desired. Maybe not. Uh, well, yeah. With Joomla Lite, there was also talk about some potential distributions of uh, yeah. a package Joomla for like corporate or enterprise. So See, we maintain our own. We maintain our own Joomla install that we keep patched and security updates. So all of our sites wouldn't appear in that download list. Only, you know. Joomla, Joomla Lite is only removing components that aren't used very much. Yeah. And so the core offering. Um, It might be like that. Um, whether it comes out as a distro or whether it's um, a distribution that has some decoupled components, to get, but you can still install them if you wish to. Yeah. And so it's not like they're downgrading it, they're just taking out some of the rubbish. Or not as used. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. Um,